So this is going to be a really short uh, recap lesson. Um, it's designed to go over some of the key topics that we've done already in year nine, but also stuff we've done in year eight and year seven, uh, just so it's always fresh in your mind. There will be a multiple choice quiz to complete once you've watched this video. Um, and obviously you may pause this video, watch it again, and use this video as much as you want to to help you answer those multiple choice questions. So we're going to start off with recapping hardware. So on the um, screen at the moment, you can see an example of a storage device. Now, this is a magnetic hard drive, and its job is to store things on your computer when the power is switched off. So we're going to have a little recap of some of these ideas. So inside a computer, you have got uh, four main elements. OK, you have input devices, you have output devices, you have the processing, which happens inside the computer, which enables whatever's gone into the input to turn into outputs. And then you've got storage where we might save something or load something from it. Now, the normal process will be your user would enter some values. So it'd go in at input to start off with and then it would go into the computer. OK, then it'll be processed by the CPU. OK, it's always the CPU in processing. So the CPU will run it and then it might save some files. So maybe this is a Word document you're editing and it will save it to the hard drive once you're finished. And then it will display something on the screen, print something out, maybe play some music or some other form of outputs. So that's a basic overview of a computer. So here's some example devices. So input, you might have a keyboard, a mouse or a scanner. You may also have things like a webcam, a microphone or things like that. Processing is always CPU. There's, there's no other processing device. I mean, technically, you could say graphics card, um, but let's just focus on CPU for now. Then for output, you've got things like your monitor. Uh, you have printers and speakers, anything where information comes out of the computer. Finally, we have storage devices. This is where we will store things over time, where we want things to be saved permanently. So, for example, like the hard drive inside your PC, or even um, things like your Blu-ray player or DVD player, where you can put discs into your computer or even into your uh, games console. So when we talk about processing, we really mean running instructions. The device that runs your instructions inside the computer is known as a CPU or Central Processor Unit. Now, the Central Processor Unit is a very important device. It will make sure that your instructions are run. So when you run a program, for example, like Word or maybe a game that you've got on your mobile phone or any program whatsoever or any app whatsoever, then it's the CPU that's making use of the instructions. So it runs through the instructions one by one. Now we measure the speed of the CPU in Hertz or more likely gigahertz. Now a Hertz is frequency. Okay, it's the number of instructions the CPU can run per second. So one gigahertz processor, which is essentially saying one billion Hertz, can run one billion instructions per second. Now that's really fast and modern day CPUs will run even faster than that. So what do we mean by storage? Storage devices allow us to save things over time. So when you finish editing a Word document or you've um, uh, maybe played your computer game for a bit and you want to save your progress, then that has to be saved to a storage device. If it's not saved to a storage device, then the progress in your game will be lost. The Word document and editing has been, will be lost as well. It's long and short of it, Anything that's not on storage devices, when the power gets switched off, is completely and utterly deleted. So we have three main types of storage device, which you need to be aware of. The first one is magnetic. Now, that's the one you'll find in most desktop PCs. Um, it's cheap, it's cheerful, it stores a lot of information. It's not the fastest, but it's fast enough. Then you've got solid state, which is what you'll find inside your mobile phones. And um, that is much faster than magnetic, but it's much more expensive. And finally, you have optical, and this is things like DVDs. So DVDs or Blu-rays or the kind of disc you'll get in for your PlayStation or for your Xbox. These are known as optical devices because they use lasers to read off the disc, okay? Lasers is made out of lights, your IC lights, so that's where the word optic kind of comes from. 
So the next thing to quickly recap is networking. OK, so this is probably a good time to pause the video, maybe before we move into networking and maybe watch that again. The hardware, maybe try the hardware questions and the multiple choice que um, um, uh, quiz that I've given you and then move on. So let's move on. Networking. What is a network? We've been doing this in year nine already as a recap. Uh, essentially, a network is where we have more than two computers connected together so they can talk to one another. They can communicate. There are two main types of networks I've been looking at. We have local area networks. Now, this is the kind of network where you have at home, um, probably the network you're using right now to watch this video. Uh, the ones we have in school, maybe in a business um, and things like that. They are in a small-ish area. So your home's obviously smaller than school. However, it's still considered a small area. A WAN or wide area network will cover a much wider area. For example, maybe an entire town or an entire country or even the world. The most exam common example is the Internet, um, but things like banks might um, use it as well because a bank is spread over the world is sometimes um, and all over the country. So they will have branches all around the country. Therefore, they need a wide area network to make sure they all could talk to one another. So. Around the world, there's lots of different local area networks. So you have one right now at home. OK, the school has one. I'm using that to record this video right now. And those lands are all um, set up separately. OK, now, in order for them to be able to talk to one another, to be able to access the Internet, to be able to download this video you're watching right now, um, they need to be able to um, talk to each other. And also to do that, they need a route to get from A to B. So imagine, um, let's pretend that for some reason I am over here at the moment. So this is Mr. H, I'm here. And you are maybe here, okay? So that's your home network right here, okay, that I've kind of circled on the board. Uh, and also, here's me. Now in order to send my video that you're watching right now over to you guys, I have to send it to this device here. And it's known as a router. Now, a router's job is to create a route, okay? A route being um, the way you get from A to B, okay? So, a router's job is to route um, the information, the video that you're watching. So, you'll send it over to this guy, this other router, and then this router will send it up to you, you okay? When you want to maybe request your next video, the um, route will be reserved, reversed. So, I'm going to do this in a nice purple color. So, the route would go to this guy, then over to this one, and then finally back to here to get the video back. So the router's job is to send information, to send data from one place to another, to create the route between the two computing devices. Now, two ways to connect to a computer network. There's wires, okay, and we know that this, we call this wired, and wireless, which is probably what you're more used to. That's where you don't need to plug a cable into your computer. Here's an example network at school. Um, so we have um, the two ICT rooms. Uh, I know there's three now, but um, let's just pretend the third one doesn't exist. Um, and if I want to send a packet um, from one room to another, okay, it will have a route. Okay, so it's going to go from one computer to the next. So we'll go to the switch first. Then that will go to our router. Then it will go to the other switch. And then finally over to another PC. If I had a wireless device, so maybe an iPad, so let's say that's an iPad, then that's going to go to the Wi-Fi box first, then it's going to go to the router, and then maybe it's going to go to the server, and then that I can get maybe my files or whatever it happens to be. So a network set up so all these devices can communicate, and um, this is known as a local area network. Now, Wi-Fi is a way of connecting your devices, okay? It's not the internet, I'll be that, make that really clear, it's not the internet, it's just a way of connecting to a network. Now, that network may have access to the um, internet, but only has access through the internet if it's got a router, okay? Now, some devices might have Wi-Fi plus a router, okay? Now, the device you will have at home is exactly that. It's a one device which does two things. It has the Wi-Fi and it also has your router. So 
We also uh, connect wirelessly to a wireless router. Wi-Fi uses radio waves to communicate information. Okay, so the radio waves are sent out through the antennas. Now, sometimes those antennas are um, hidden, so you can't see them, and they're inside the actual device itself. Same as your mobile phones, there is an antenna inside it, um, but it's hidden. Okay, you can't really see it, but it is there. Um, so Wi-Fi uses radio waves to send information out. There are different speeds of Wi-Fi, okay? So you might have a really fast one at home or maybe a really slow one, depends. Um, the speed of Wi-Fi is based on the method you use to connect to it. So what is a route, okay, to be really nice and clear? Um, if you're following routes to get into town, you're following a set of directions, okay? Data sent by computers has a similar set of directions and that is known as the route. The route data it takes is based on the routers and networks it has to go through. So here's an example. So if I'm trying to access uh, Google uh, as an example, okay, we might start here in Birmingham. Okay, I'm gonna change that to red maybe so it's easy to see. Um, then it will bounce around the country a little bit. Okay, so it's following this route and then it will follow that route off to America and then the packet will come back the same way. So packets and information that you send across the internet will take different routes, different directions, okay? Same way is if I was going to a university, for example, I would follow a route to get there. So let's have a quick summary. These are the keywords you need to know for um, networking. So we have www, which stands for World Wide Web, okay? And that's the kind of thing we use to describe websites. The internet, is an interconnected collection of networks, or put it very, very simply, it's all the local area networks in the world connected together so they can talk to each other. A switch is used inside a, um, a local area network to connect lots and lots of devices together. You will only ever use a switch if you have many, many devices to connect together. So for example, in a school at home, you wouldn't need a switch. Wi-Fi is how we connect to a network through wireless communication, and that's needed in order to connect wireless devices. At LAN stands for local area network, and this is a network spread over a small area. WAN is a wide area network, and spread over a much wider area, for example, a country or the world. A router is used to connect all these different local area networks together so they can talk to each other. And it will, it will route packets, will create a, a kind of path from one place to another in order to get there. And finally, you've got something called an ethernet cable, and that's the cable we use to connect uh, devices to a switch or a router through wired communication. So long and short of it, it's the wires we use to set up a network. So again, this is a great place to pause the video, um, maybe try the networking questions in your um, uh, worksheets, and then uh, have another look at this video. The last thing I'm going to quickly revise is binary. Okay, so looking at these numbers, okay, hopefully you are familiar with them. Notice that we have one on the right hand side, that's really important. So hopefully you can start to see a pattern going from there. So just have a quick think to yourself what is the pattern happening here? Well, hopefully you've noticed that these numbers are doubling. Oops, uh, these numbers are doubling. So going from that one, we've got times two, then to go to two to four, we times it by two then times by two again to get to eight, and so on and so forth. So each of those numbers are doubling every time. So what's the next number in the sequence? What's the double of 128? Well, it's 256, okay? So that will be the next number in the sequence. If I kept going, it'd be 512 and uh, uh, 1024 and so on and so forth. So how do we convert 1100 into a num normal number? Okay, well, I'll quickly show you. So the first thing you've got to do is um, you've got to write out the table. One, two, four, and eight. Notice that I start the one on the right-hand side. So it's kind of like in reverse order. Then I'll write my binary underneath it. One, one, zero, zero. I then look to see where the ones are. Okay, there's a one in the eight column and there's a one in the four column. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add those two numbers together. I'm going to add eight plus four. Okay, 8 plus 4 is 12, so the answer to that number is 12. So 1100 0, 0 is actually 12. Okay, so there's the working out. 
So how do I turn 30 into binary? Well, exactly the same process almost. I start off with my one, my two, my four, and my eight, okay? I then work out, well, which numbers do I need to add up to get to 13? Big tip on binary, we always start on the left-hand side this time, because eight is smaller than 13, so I definitely need an eight. Well, if I subtract eight from 13, that leaves me with um, a five, doesn't it? So I now need to get five. Well, if I add a four, well, eight plus four is going to be 12, so I need another one. And I don't need a two, because that would give me too much. So that is the binary for 13.